welcome to the Miss Juneteenth pageant. I will never get over seeing Miss Juneteenth cleaning toilets. <laughs> <laughs> The winner of Miss Juneteenth will receive a full scholarship to any historically black institution of your choice. Good luck. I know. That you are looking to replicate your success. What's her problem? I beat her. When we get the new place, we can bring you on more regular. I hate to see you working so hard. I'm doing the best I can. I don't have the rest of the money. We don't do credit. We don't do layaway. <laughs> you got something for her account? You know I can't carry that kind of money on me, girl. I'm gonna be right by y'all this time. I've been holding down a long time around here. She my dream now. I'm gonna make sure that she's something that we ain't. If I make the dance team, I can get me a scholarship. I ain't gonna have my daughter out there dancing like that. Ain't no school handing out no full ride for that. You better hope your grades turn out right. Where's your homework? You worry about the wrong thing. I need you to focus on your studies. Miss Juneteenth is here to prepare you for the future. Your dinner knife. That is your salad knife. One would surely not eat the main course with that. <laughs> we are expecting greatness. Why are you making me do it? Didn't do nothing for you. Uh -huh. So get up and clap your hands. I not ever see you in my house again. You always embarrass me. I'm not cute. <laughs> or built to suit a fashion model size. <laughs> That's my baby. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Good evening and welcome to this BFI at Home Women with Movie Camera event. I'm Nicole Krenzel and tonight I'm joined by writer, director Channing Godfrey Peoples to talk about her new film, Miss Juneteenth. Channing, congratulations on your beautiful film, which I understand is a very personal story for you. As some people might be watching from the UK and not have seen the film just yet, I'd love if you can tell us a bit more about Miss Juneteenth pageant and the role it played in your life growing up. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because um, I probably have to give a little bit of an explanation of what Juneteenth is first <laughs> and give context to that just in case people haven't seen the film yet. But um, I grew up in um, Texas, in a city called Fort Worth, Texas specifically, and um, Juneteenth was very much part of the fabric of my childhood. And for the folks who are unfamiliar with Juneteenth, it's a day that commemorates um, the fact that the enslaved people in Texas didn't find out they were free until two and a half long years after everyone else. So that's two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation in the U.S. and um, for me growing up, it was commemorated with um, parades and blues music and barbecue and dance. And, you know, it was really um, a day that the community came together to commemorate our enslaved ancestors. And um, in the center of it was what I always really looked forward to. And that was um, something called the Miss Juneteenth pageant. And it was a scholastic beauty pageant for young Black women to gain college scholarship. And it was, of course, put on by the community um, in order for these young women um, to be able to invest in these young women's futures. Yeah. And it's such an important time, I guess, in the history for Black people, definitely those who are based in Texas. And I think speaking more about the people and the communities of who are affected, I'd love to know a bit more about where the characters of Turquoise and her daughter Kai come from. And I guess what you wanted to explore in terms of the, the pageant itself between a mother and daughter relationship. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because like my memories of the pageant specifically were um, seeing like, you know, all these, young, beautiful Black women kind of float out on stage in their gowns. And um, I just remember being excited by, you know, the pomp and circumstance of the pageantry, you know, but it also was about, I realized as an adult, I realized it was about seeing the hope on their faces. And I mean, that was something that I think has stayed with me. And I realize now um, that that was formative in a way, you know, it gave me a sense of confidence as a young black girl to see that. 
and it, it was also a real life example that, you know, I probably completely took for granted, you know, as my version of Miss America and I had it in real time. And so um, that was a big inspiration for me. And I remember when I was thinking about Miss Juneteenth and wanting to create a story around a former Miss Juneteenth, I started doing, you know, my own little limited research in the community, like, oh, can I, you know, talk to this young woman I remember was Miss Juneteenth or where are the Miss Juneteenths? And there were a couple I just couldn't, you know, track down. And I was like, hmm, you know, what, what about, the ones we don't know what happened to them, that their lives didn't go on to like some great success. Um, and the idea for Turquoise was born. And then I started piecing together, you know, other parts of my life. Like I grew up in that same community in which the film is set. And um, it was also always very um, affirming for me. You know, the film is set in a, in a city, but it feels like a small country town because the community is so, you know, close-knit. Um, it, it's a historically Black community. And then I also was um, looking at the fact that I had grown up um, as the daughter of a single mother. My mother was single for much of my life. And so, you know, I was taking some of those, some of that journey into the film as well. And that's so important, I guess, understanding the journey of, of your characters, um, which I think is so interesting. For me, I, I felt like the film really spoke massively to the intersections of girlhood and womanhood. And I guess the running themes moving between them in terms of like expectations, you know, life progression. And as we see towards the end of the film, not to give anything towards, um, give anything away, is this sense of accomplishment you know, and the, the, the levels of success that we're all striving for, um, and as women, as black women and black girls, but also striving for. Um, mm -hmm. I'd love to know what you'd hope the film would say about these themes, um, in that not everyone's road is essentially the same. Um, I'd love to know a bit more. I mean, you've, you've said it so eloquently <laughs> in saying that, you know, um, you know, there are sometimes our roads have twists and turns, you know, and um, sometimes our dreams get repurposed, but it doesn't mean that, you know, we have to stop dreaming. And um, there was some themes that um, I was navigating in the film as well. You know, I talked a little bit about um, Juneteenth and the fact that these enslaved people got their freedom late. And so, you know, I was also applying that theme to the characters as well. You know, what happens when good things come too late, you know, and that's definitely what each of these characters are experiencing and like, what does freedom mean to each of these characters? It's performed so well um, by Nicole Bahari, my favorite, one of my favorite actors. Um, I love if you can talk a bit more about casting and casting Nicole, for example, like how did you know she was your Turquoise Jones? Well, you know, for me, um, the film is so specific. Um, and so it was very, very important for me to find actors who could um, be able to embrace that specificity and also to be able to bring a sense of nuance to the roles because, um, you know, for me as a writer, you know, I'm not, writing in black and white, I'm writing in shades of gray, you know, so I needed actors who could navigate, um, you know, very specific emotional journeys. And um, I also, you know, it was important that we had a sense of, you know, actors who were able to embrace the regional aspect of the film. Authenticity was so important. And this was, you know, set in a black community in Fort Worth, Texas. And so, you know, I needed actors who were able to, you know, walk and talk as if they were from the region. They were also surrounded by local actors. Um, so that was absolutely important. I think also for me as a director, naturalistic performance is, you know, part of who I am, like it's my style. So, you know, I wanted to find actors who could bring that, you know, sense of naturalism. And so, you know, I'd been, um, I, you know, been familiar with Nicole's work for quite a while, you know, and um, it had a great respect for the nuance that she brings to her roles. And um, I really wanted, I knew this was a really, you know, co complex role and I really needed someone who could bring that sense of nuance to the role. 
and also had, you know, a mandate that I really needed to see people in the roles before they were cast. Mm -hmm. And I got to see her read for Turquoise. And I was like, yes, you know, she definitely can do this. And, um, you know, she brings that um, brilliance to the role. Yeah, she definitely does. I agree. It was brilliant casting. Um, I know that this is your first feature film, which is exciting. Um, mm -hmm. Has the journey been like, I'd love to know a bit more about what the journey has been like for you. Um, how long did it take you to get this project realized? Um, I think that would be really insightful for anyone else who wants to go through the process themselves. Yeah, I don't want to scare anyone. <laughs> <laughs> It was definitely a long journey, but, you know, I was also writing, you know, a film about a community that, you know, is, it had, not be, had not been seen before, hadn't often been seen before, you know, on film and um, about this woman and, you know, we're navigating her interior life and her dreams and things like that. So, you know, it's not like an action film or, you know, uh, um, the sci-fi film or anything like that you know it's very very specific and so you know it, it wasn't like originally it wasn't like an easy sale you know but I think people connected to the story and eventually you know we were able to find supportive partners who said you know I want to make this story so um, but it took a while it took you know from when I started writing it to like when we got on set and you know we're premiering at Sundance it was like I think seven years wow. and during those seven years you know um, we weren't there and I say we me and my um, creative partner and the other producers on the film it's not like we were twiddling our thumbs you know we were pushing the film up the hill like pitching it to people for financing we also were different going through different development programs. Like it went through um, a program initially called Austin Film Society, which is founded by um, the filmmaker Richard Linklater. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, they were hugely supportive. We went through um, another um, organization called San Francisco Film, which is supportive of independent filmmakers. And then we went through the Sundance Institute, which, um, Obviously, you know, um, it's Sundance Film Festival, they have an institute um, that nurtures filmmakers as well. And so it was going through all these different programs that helped us really um, develop the film more. And also um, were, was kept raising our ideas about what the production uh, value could be. And I guess it's through that process are you able to really refine a lot of those ideas and um... Yeah, that's mm -hmm. an incredible achievement to 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 show at Sundance and to and to have the film out, which is really cool. Um, with that said, I, I'd love to know a bit more about if there were, or if there are any um, filmmakers or films specifically that has influenced your work. Oh, for sure. Um, I love Charles Burnett. <laughs> <laughs> And so, you know, I, I can remember being truly inspired in film school by Killer of Sheep, um, you know, so much so, you know, I tell this story, but I sat down in front of my computer and screenshot like every frame of that film. And that, that was before they had these websites that are dedicated to like, you know, like you'll get on there and can see screenshots of the film. Yeah. So, I, so I did that, but it also, you know, helped me really, um, you know, study his composition and, you know, the subtleties of his film and the sense of nuance and the human way in which he's presenting people. Mm -hmm. uh, um, he has another film that I really love called My Brother's Wedding as well. Um, Julie Dash's Daughters of the Dust um, mm -hmm. was also, you know, has also been inspirational to me as a filmmaker because um, she was showing us a, um, place in the sea islands that we often haven't seen on screen and mm -hmm. it was just so beautifully done and um, black women were portrayed in this really beautiful way you know I was inspired definitely by Cassie Lemon's Eve's Bayou um, I love Jonathan Demi um, and you know he was such an incredible filmmaker and there's a film that I really love called Rachel Getting Married um, that was you know that inspired me um, there's just so many filmmakers that I really love. I'm drawing a blank a little bit. I hate to leave anybody, anybody <laughs> out. 
But um, I was definitely a film buff before I got into film. Oh, I loved a film called Claudine um, mm -hmm. as well by John Barry. If people get a chance to check that one out. Amazing. And actually, I, I just remember that you're, you were mentored by Charles Bennett. Bennett as yeah. Well. How, what was what was that like? What was that experience, and how did it actually come about? Like to be mentored by someone who you admire. Well, you know, I was talking about the development programs earlier. That was as a result of the Austin Film Society. You know, yeah. and I feel like that's another thing that the development programs do really well. You know, they surround you by filmmakers that inspire you, mm -hmm. and you have access to them and are able to ask questions and you know ask you know about their journeys, which become like super important like when you're deciding like what kind of filmmaker you you know you want to be or you know where what roads you know are available to you you know you learn from people's experiences and things like that I think as far as you know my experience with Charles Burnett he's just you know he's a master of filmmaking you know and um, not just a master of black filmmaking or American filmmaking, he's a master of filmmaking period. And so <laughs> uh, just being there um, across the table from him was like so intimidating. And, you know, I just literally was hanging on to his every word, you know? So um, I think he's just like this incredible individual. And he was like, he's he was very giving and, um, you know, and, with sharing his experiences, you know, from his life and as an artist. And so I'm just really thankful for the experience. Yeah, that sounds amazing. That sounds incredible. I would do exactly, I would freak out exactly the same way. Like, oh my God. Well, I, did. I did. I didn't know I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with that, I, I would love to know if you're able to talk about what's next for you. Um, are there any more films coming out? Are there kind of new interests? Um, I'd love to know kind of what you you next yeah um so my journey is you know like i've just this year gotten representatives and things like that so now i'm looking at you know other projects to direct you know um, i'm also working on my originals i won't give them up ever ever mm -hmm. ever <laughs> so i'm working on my next original film you know there's some mm -hmm. um things i'm also working on in the television space and just, you know, um, conceiving of ideas, you know, in the middle of this pandemic that we all are navigating mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and just trying to um, focus in on, you know, on my own journey and really affirming, you know, what kind of artist that I want to continue to be. Yeah, that's incredible. I guess for anyone watching, watch this space, right? Um, Thank you for your film and your time, Channing, and thank you all for watching. Miss Juneteenth is available to rent on BFI Player and is also screening at BFI Southbank this month. So please definitely go and watch. Thank you and good night. Thank you all for watching Miss Juneteenth and good night.